Hey Saints fans, welcome to another installment of Marymount Athletics Summer Segment, Behind the Moment. Every Thursday over the summer, we've been diving back into some of the greatest moments in each program's history. Today, we welcome back the 2018 Centennial Women's Golf Champion, Alessandra Bertacci, who holds just about every record for the Young Women's Golf Program at Marymount. Also joining us is Head Coach Rob Ferguson, who has been with the program since the start. Thank you for joining us today, Alessandra from your home country of Italy and Rob from the beautiful and newly renovated Washington Country Club. Alessandra, I wanna start out with you. You came into a young Marymount program in the fall of 2015 and made an instant impact. You averaged a round of 82 with a national rating of 141 in division three and close out your first season with the program's first championship at the Stevenson Spring Invitational. Can you speak to your decision on coming to Marymount and maybe what your thoughts were on the first season and how it went for you? Um, sure. So actually, um, I came to Marymount in a very random way. I didn't know much about USA and I never thought about coming to the USA for university. I was in my last year of high school on vacation visiting my cousin in Alexandria. And so I visited Marymount. I got the chance to walk around campus and then I met President Matthew Shank, who was talking about uh, how he created this program and how he was interested in becoming, in making Marymount much more international. So I was kind of the perfect fit and uh, I was very excited about it. I, I really, I played the golf, played golf a lot um, during my high school years. So I really like the idea about, you know, being able to study and keep playing golf at the same time. And I just loved Marymount campus. And then I got to know Coach Ferguson. So it was kind of, you know, the perfect place. So I said, yes, and my adventure started. So with golf then, that first year was, was a great start to your career um, through, a, through a four year career. Kind of highlight how that first season went for you. Yes, I was very nervous. So uh, back then I thought that I didn't really play that well. Um, I remember I got sick my very first tournament. So I wasn't happy about that. And um, yeah, I was kind of scared, you know, new team, new country. Um, and I was just trying to play my best golf. Um, looking back, I was like, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, well, it was a huge change. So I'm happy with how the season went. But, you know, after my first year, I wasn't happy. <laughs> 82 wasn't my goal. Um, but, you know, looking back now, it's pretty good. <laughs> And Rob, with Alessandra coming in and being a golfer that I'm sure you knew at the time you could build a program around in, in such a young program, did you see her first season going as well as it did? Yeah, I think there's a lot of things that happened as she played, like playing off different turf. Uh, I think getting used to eat American food. I think being in a van with uh, four other girls, five other girls, six other girls driving around playing golf. Uh, I think there's a lot of adjustments. Uh, there's adjustment because she played in meters, not yards. Uh, there was a lot of, there was a lot of fun things that happened. There was a lot of things that, you know, when you're traveling, you're getting used to studying and everything else like that. She was, you know, she was doing well. Um, I think when she became a sophomore, she became much more comfortable and she really started to progress. Uh, maybe not as much on the golf course, but being more comfortable about playing golf, maybe not being as nervous and, playing well. We played a good schedule her sophomore year. We played against a lot of good teams. We played against the number one ranked team and uh, Datal, and she played very well. Uh, only the next year to win at Datal. Um, so it, it was it was a good start. Uh, I just think there's a lot of adjustments for language. Uh, I even spoke a little Italian by the end of the year. I can't speak it anymore. So that's kind of where that ended. But uh, I, I thought the first introduction to her at Marymount and a growing program, she was what we needed. Uh, Brandy Hartsell was another part of that, that you know helped everything kind of get going. Uh, and then Alexa Miller came in, and at that point we were building a team with even more, even more players, and uh, she was a big part of the foundation. Well, I wanna, I wanna stay on that s subject of language barrier coming into your freshman year. So I know we had a little conversation before this interview started. Coming into your freshman year, how much English did you actually know? 
you sound great in this interview already. So clearly uh, a couple of years in the United States did you well. And then Rob, from your viewpoint, learning the Italian, how difficult was that? Um, I think for me, um, I was very shy. So I thought it was, you know, doing it wrong. So I didn't really, I understood everything, but I was very shy, you know, talking in English. Um, but then I got used to it, um, you know, and I eventually learned it. I think after two, three months in my first year, I was like totally comfortable in it. The first month was, you know, I was very, in my thing, mixed Italian and English, a lot of hand gestures. That's how I, I got it started, <laughs> but then eventually I got it. And Rob, you learned a couple of Italian phrases there in the first year. You probably yeah, can't totally, say them now, can you? I um, totally forgot them. Um, I, I, I broke down. I really didn't learn my Italian. But uh, a couple of the fun things that, that happened there was the, um, I think that helped her bond with the team. We used to have closest to the pin on the last hole bought dinner, you know, like would pick where we go to dinner. So they convinced her that Buffalo Wild Wings was one of the best places in the whole world. So we ate there a lot, um, Chick-fil-A and other places where, you know, she liked the food and we'd go there. And there was, a, there was like Courtney Van We would always want a room with her because they would talk and a few other girls would talk a lot more. Uh, I used to joke, uh, who's the biggest talker? Who's the lowest talker? Who talks the least? Um, but uh, it was a lot of fun. It, there was a lot of, uh, you know, the first few years where we were really learning as a team, I was learning as a coach, um, how to do things better. And she fit the mold, Alessandra, perfectly. And she excelled at times and uh, academically and on the golf course. So let's get back to your career a little bit, Alessandra. It continued to blossom over the next couple of years. And then you got to your junior season, which to me, looking on paper, was probably your most successful year of your career. I'm just going to highlight a couple of the highlights. I know I'm not even going to say half of them, um, but the major stuff. You won three tournaments, including the Centennial Championship. You were named the Centennial Golfer of the Year. You were the Centennial Scholar Athlete of the Year. You were arguably one of the best golfers in Division Three your junior year, finishing in the 94.8 percentile through 13 rounds, facing off against 305 opponents. Can you talk about your career improvement over those three years and, and just how well you played that junior year? Yeah, um, I think my junior year, I just became more comfortable with the courses we were playing. We were playing like the same courses kind of, you know, during the fall season and the spring season. So there were some courses that I really like um, for, you know, the environment like Dato Island. Oh my God, the place was beautiful. So we were all relaxed going there for spring break. Um, and other courses that I just really liked and they always played well. Um, so, and then the team, I think we bonded a lot my junior year. I was doing pretty good academically. So I was in a good place. Um, I was very, you know, relaxed and just going there to try to golf my best. Um, and uh, so it worked out and I think most of, you know, my successes are thanks to Rob that, you know, stick, stick with me for, you know, mostly for my centennial conference last round. I think I was the most nervous I ever been in my life for this and that reason. Um, and Rob was there, you know, joking, trying to speak in Italian and distract me from, you know, my bad shots and trying to encourage me. So that really helped me <laughs> for my junior year. So I want to dial into that Centennial Championship. Um, so that was the first year you were in a, a conference championship. Rob, I know you battled really hard to, to get that pulled off. And, and that's a great conference to be a part of. Uh, and that first year, um, it was a two round championship up there in Gettysburg. And you carried a lead through the first day with an Ursinus golfer with the first day of the 79. In the final 18 holes, you never lost the lead. You just continued to roll. You carded an 82, a little bit higher than day one, but you cruised to a six stroke victory in the first showing for the Saints at a championship. Can you talk about that feeling leaving the 18th green on the final day and knowing you just won a conference championship? 
I, I think my first thought was, oh my God, thank God it went in because that pot was a little bit too strong. So I didn't want to make the comeback potter pot. So I was very happy that I made it up and down. Um, but yes, I was super happy. I was super, I was super happy that it ended because I was really nervous. So I was like, thank God. Um, very proud of myself and I had a great support. Um, you know, my team was there. Rabu was me was with me for like 15 holes, I think. He was coming back and going to see the other girls, but then it was all it was always coming back to me uh, because he knew that I needed help in that moment. <laughs> Um, so, and also there were, there were a lot of family members of the other golf members of, you know, the team. Uh, so it was really nice. Um, yeah, I'm not, you know, the best, um, player, you know, match play, I kind of feel the pressure. Uh, the other players were a little bit more aggressive than me. Uh, so I think I suffered a bit from the tension in the, in the, in my team, um, in my, you know, when I was playing. Um, but then, you know, it worked out. I wasn't happy with the 82. I think considering everything, um, it wasn't bad and I won. So thank God. <laughs> was, was there a point there in that, that final round, maybe in the back nine or something when you already had a, a nice lead going into the last couple of holes where you knew like, this is mine. It, it, it can be mine. I just need to finish out these couple of holes. I, I knew I was in the lead. I didn't know by uh, how much because I didn't want to count, you know, how the other plays were, uh, how the other players were, uh, were doing uh, because I thought it would make me more, even more nervous. So I was just trying, please do not go into the trees. And I think that's what I did for like the last three holes. So I was like, okay, let's get out of the trees and then make up and down in some way. So I was trying to, you know, uh, go on and finish every hole and then it was starting thinking okay this is a new hole nothing happened let's just start again and uh, I hit the trees again I think up until 18 I remember I was coming out of the trees and then you know same stuff <laughs> well that's what makes a great golfer right you, you turn the page and and you worry about the next swing right yes so Rob I, I want to turn this over to you in just the first season, the centennial, you, you had a golfer come away with the, the victory. Tell, tell me your thoughts on that moment, what you felt leaving the 18th green and, and seeing Alessandra pull it out. Well, I'm gonna back up just a little bit because I, I think maybe on the 10th hole, I had a good idea because I could see the scores that she was gonna win. And she had a birdie putt, it was a hard birdie putt, but read the putt and she hit it and went in. And I think she was a little bit surprised she birdied the 10th hole. And then I did leave for a little while and, and see some of the other players and do that. And uh, what I do remember coming back to was a few times where there were there was a little bit of trouble there off the tee and things like that, but no no really trouble spots. And then on the 16th hole, um, she had a fantastic drive down the middle, and then I think a nine iron to about 12 feet behind the hole, and she made that putt. And I think at that point she knew she was going to win. And at, it was kind of funny because she did get up on the 17th hole and slice it into the woods and then hit a couple trees and hit a couple more trees. And I was just like, I should chip it out the fairway. And she hit a couple more trees and then finally ended up making a double bogey there. Good double bogey, by the way. And then on the last hole, she stood up there and um, she wanted to hit driver. And I kept shaking my head, no, 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 no. And she kept pointing at it. I was like, no, no. And then she had a beautiful three wood right down the fairway. And I think a pitching wedge just past the hole maybe 20 feet and probably hit it 20 footer that went 25, 26 feet and then can the one coming back. And at that point, the team was there. It was, a, it was a great moment, you know, as a coach, having the, you know, individual champion is a fantastic feat. Um, we uh, did the same thing you know, the first time when we played in the Atlantic East. Uh, Isabel won the championship. It's, it's nice to win the championship. We won a team championship and Alessandra's senior year there. So it, 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 was, it was just as important right then. All those things kind of stack up all together. Um, I, I think being the first, it'll stick in my head. I remember those shots uh, probably better than she does. Um, I'm a golf professional and that's kind of my job, but I could still see what club she hit and everything else. And 
it, it was it was good. I mean, when I was there, standing right with her, and we walked through the shots, she executed perfectly. Uh, I just didn't spend the whole time with her. Um, you have four other players out there playing, and you're trying to get them to perform the best you can also. So, Alessandra, into the 2019 season, you wrapped up your senior season with a third-place finish at the Centennial Championship and the first-ever Atlantic East Championship. And as Rob mentioned, Isabel took the championship there, but you guys took the team championship in the first year that that ever happened. Uh, you were then named Centennial Scholar Athlete for the second straight year. When you look back on your career, are there any moments you wish you could relive over again or anything you'd change? Um, moments that I would relive uh, probably those four years. Um, you know, hands down, I had a lot of fun. Uh, so every single tournament, I really enjoyed it. Um, and, you know, my team was great. Coach is great. So... I will relieve all of them. Um, but, you know, like winning the Centennial Conference was very fun. Winning in Dota Island was very fun. All those chocolate chip cookies was, were very good. So, you know, um, winning, of course, I would relieve those moments and maybe I would uh, try to score a little bit better um, my second round for the Centennial Conference just to, you know. Just to show him what right. Mary, you know. But now you have a nice wall at your house there in Italy of all your awards and your trophies <laughs> and medals. And uh, Rob, kind of similar to the first question I asked you about her first season. When you recruited Alessandra, you knew you knew she was going to be a big difference maker in, in the program. Did you have any idea she'd go on to have a decorated for career like she did? Um. Golf-wise, yes. I, I felt like she had potential. It was more of just helping her, you know, get comfortable with playing. Uh, I, I don't feel the same way she does when she's out there playing. I'm very relaxed because I know that she can do it. She evidently is not as relaxed, so it's kind of humorous that way. Um, but academically, she knocked it out of the park. Um, I, I knew that she was a good student when she got there. She super excelled at school. Uh, even the professors came up at the end and told me, you know, like, loved having her here. Uh, boy, you could bring more students like that into the university. It'd be fantastic. You know, she just a great student, great person. And uh, she actually played golf with a few of those professors at, at some point in, uh, in an event. So it, it was, it's what I thought. Um, I I really think that uh, she felt comfortable. I felt very comfortable with her. I enjoyed her company. Um, it, it, it's interesting when you ride in that van for hours upon hours going to these tournaments and it, you really learn a lot about the whole team and everybody. And um, the practice rounds were also fun playing as a team and um, making challenges for them. And if the last year at Washington Golf and Country Club, if they weren't doing renovations and the range wasn't closed, she probably would have won another Centennial Championship without practicing very much. She still performed at a very high level and uh, she was getting ready to go on to the next part of her life, which was applying to go. Um, she'll have to explain to you all the things that she does at John Hopkins University. It's too long a list for me. And that's, that's where I wanted to go with this next part before we wrap this segment up is you, you went from Marymount, one centennial women's golf school to another one at Johns Hopkins. And you finished up one year, you're working uh, on stuff from home this year because of, of COVID-19, but talk about what you're doing over at Johns Hopkins. And I know it's like a, a four or five year uh, slate for you lined up. So I'm sure there's a whole list of things that you're doing there. Yes. So I just started um, my PhD program. That's a five-year program. Um, so now I'm the first into the first year for the master. I'm uh, doing chemistry, um, research in organic chemistry. We're looking at polymers, applications, and stuff like that. So it's a long way. It's mostly uphill, but you know, We'll see how it goes. Uh, finger crossed. I survived Marymount. I hope I survived this. Um, you know, and then always golfing to relax myself. So that's 
before. Um, but yes, so now I'm working from home, so that's pretty good. You know, eating a lot of pasta, mommy's cooking, <laughs> not have to get clean dishes or anything else. So I'm pretty excited about that. <laughs> Yeah, well, I can't say that I've been in Italy to taste the, the pasta, but I've heard nothing but good things and I'm going to have to do that. So um, I want to wrap up today's conversation like I do with every other segment, giving you each a chance for final comments on Alessandra's career uh, and give everyone out there maybe a viewpoint that they might not see from the results or stories online. So stuff maybe behind the scenes that, that you liked about 2018 championship or just your career in general. Alessandra, why don't you start it out? Okay, I, I think uh, for me, um, at that point, it wasn't much about, you know, golfing and trying to score well. It was that I was really comfortable with the people that were with me. I was really comfortable with Rob. I was really comfortable with my team. We were friends and that helped me a lot because I knew I had this uh, support system behind me. And so I was really in my feeling well playing and uh, you know and that just golfing is you know if you really feel relaxed and not anxious at all like my last the tournament my, my last my last the um tournament you know round for the St. Daniel conference um and I was very relaxed and so I was very happy and just enjoying myself out there in the golf course so I think that helped me a lot Rob? Yeah, the four years went too fast. That's all. That's, I, I wish I could have her for a couple more years. Uh, it was, she was great as a freshman, you know, all the way through, through school. Um, the, the only other thing that um, probably captures is we enjoyed it as a team. There was a, a lot of fun. Uh, there was some, there was always a little bit of humor in the team. Uh, which I think is is really good. They, you know, even if you hit a ball in the woods, we'd go chase it, find it. A lot of barking, you know, like a hound dog trying to find it in the woods. So um, it, it was it was it had its great entertainment parts, and I'm pretty sure everybody on the team you can list all their names, and they would all say the same thing. They they had a lot of fun and enjoyed it. And I did too. So, in one one book is. One chapter's closed there and another one has opened up. So I'm still enjoying it. I just wish they were all around to enjoy it. I know that quite a few of the alumni follow it. Um, hopefully they watch this and they feel like they were a part of things. And um, I, I thank all of them, every single one of them. And they've all graduated, which is fantastic to me. And before COVID, I know that they all had jobs. I haven't talked to everyone lately, but uh, I, I feel like they've, they achieved in the classroom and on the golf course. Well, you have another great team with you now, and hopefully you can get back to the Atlantic East Championship and, and continue to reign over that championship that you had in the first year. Um, but that will wrap up another installment of Behind the Moment. I'd like to thank Alessandra and Coach for joining us today and helping us relive a great moment in Mary Mellon Athletics history. Tune in next Thursday as we bring you another installment of Behind the Moment. Ciao.